Hey everybody, I just wanted to sort of pop in and give a little bit of explanation as to what's going on and why this video has been so long delayed. Uh, first up, end of winter is never really a productive period for me and I was finding that making the dolls was more interesting than like sitting down and making the videos. Um, so I currently have two dolls that are finished. Um, everything's filmed. I just need to like edit everything together after this. Um, and then I actually got a job. Um, I'm now working, it's about a 45 minute commute from where I'm currently living. And I just got into doing some property management. So I'm very excited about that. And the job's going really well. It's just much longer hours and a much longer commute. And that commute is about to get longer because on top of all of that, I am actually moving here in a couple of weeks. Um, our, our whole family unit is moving. Uh, we're gonna be moving, it's about, I think it's about 25 minutes from where we currently are, give or take. So commute to work is gonna be a bit longer after that, but it's a much nicer space and I think everyone's gonna be much happier there. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, like I said, I've got the two dolls that are already finished, footage is done, I just need to like sit down and edit together some videos. In the meantime, um, here is, at long last, the Laura Croft video. Hello everyone and welcome back to Silver Griffin Makes a Thing, where we make whatever we feel like at the moment. Today we're going to take a look at how I created the second doll I customized for a Christmas gift this year. As you may have guessed from the opening, I'm making the Tomb Raider herself, Lara Croft, based on the reboot games. This doll is going to be for my roommate Amber. Lara Croft is one of her favorite characters and since she's always hunting for merch of her favorites, I wanted to make her something she wouldn't find anywhere else. I had a little bit of a close call with this one. I showed her this official Lara doll as a way to gauge her interest in the idea, and she replied with, yeah, I've been meaning to pick that up, but I went ahead with my plan anyway. Worst case scenario, she just winds up with two Lara dolls. That's still a win. Some hunting online turned up this Cerise Hood Ever After High doll. I thought her face shape would do nicely for Lara, and her skin tone is pretty close to what I'm going for. Also, the Ever After High dolls have a much more muscular arm sculpting than the Monster High dolls, which is going to be important later on. I'm still kind of astounded at how insanely long the Ever After High doll's shins are. Anyway, let's get started. We're starting this off with the basic prep work. I'm just testing the joints here. They're mostly okay, but the shoulders are a little bit loose. I'll try to fix that later. I did consider keeping her factory hair because it is in decent shape. Unfortunately, there's a kind of ragged spot on her temple, so it's gonna come off. Heat up some water to boiling, pour it into a heat safe vessel, and dunk the doll's head in to soften it. One thing I have learned is that the water does seep into the head, so be careful and drain it well before removing it. A towel around your hand is a great idea too. Use whatever water is left for making some tea. Neck peg is nice and intact. Cut off the factory hair with a pair of scissors, and then it's time for my least favorite part, removing the hair plugs. Oh, nasty. Some pure acetone takes the factory paint off very nicely. Now our prep is done, it's time to break out that epoxy sculpt and get to work on body mods. Lara is classically known for certain, hmm, attributes. And while the reboot games don't go nearly as crazy as the classic games do, a basic Ever After High doll figure just isn't gonna cut it. In line with the reboot games, I will be giving this doll a larger bust, curvier hips, and more muscular arms. I recently sat down and watched Amber play the rebooted Tomb Raider trilogy, and I really like how they made her look super strong and fit without ever visually exploiting her. Great job, Square Enix! Also, the games are just like really fantastic all the way around. 
I have a hard time playing most video games due to motion sickness issues, but it was really fun to get to watch Amber play and see the story unfold. She also got to go off about the lore of the franchise, and it was great listening to her talk about one of her favorite games for just hours on end. I built up the sculpting over the course of a couple of passes, adding more definition once the layer below has cured completely. Then it's outside to sand the modification smooth. I spend as little time outside as possible sanding the mods before retreating to my room to keep working. I mix up a paint that matches her skin tone and give her two coats to cover the epoxy. I use red and brown chalk pastels to blush her body and face, sealing the blush in with diluted Liquitex matte medium. This is my first time blushing a doll with a natural skin color, so I think I might have gone a little heavy-handed. I'm not too concerned though, since a lot of this is just going to be covered up by our costume. This is also my first doll with hair. Lots of firsts in this project. Cool. For reasons, I decided to give her yarn hair rather than rerouting. I picked up this dark brown acrylic yarn from Joann's and used a pet brush to comb it out, then used glue to transform the resulting fluff into wefts. A flat iron gets the yarn wefts nice and smooth and glossy, perfect for Lara's hair. I start on the face up next. By prepping the face with a dilute coat of matte medium, I get a surface that the pencils actually want to stick to. I carefully build up the shape and colors for her eyes, detail the mouth and nose, and made sure to add a little freckle and scar on one cheek. As battered as Lara gets over the course of these games, it's a wonder she only has the one visible scar. Here's a look at the face once I've finished building up color with the pencils. I enhance the colors with acrylic paints using teeny tiny brushes. It doesn't take much. Mostly I'm just adding a touch more brown to the irises and brightening the sclera with a bit of white paint, then adding highlights. I like to add one large and one small round highlight at the top, then a thin line at the waterline. Her face up gets finished with a couple of coats of Liquitex matte varnish. Since I have the paints out, and since I understand that sewing doll-sized gloves is an exercise in futility, I paint her hands to match Lara's fingerless gloves. Some yarn wefts all ready to go. I use some Elmer's Glue All to glue the wefts to her scalp. Some straight pins help keep them in place while the glue dries. I start by making a ring of wefts around her hairline, positioning them so that when I style her hair, the glued bases will be concealed. Lara wears her hair in a ponytail in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is the game I'm drawing her look from. By the way, if anyone wants to do any sort of Lara Croft cosplay or custom doll, Square Enix released an amazing PDF guide to her look, costume, and accessories, as well as a pattern to recreate her tank top. It even talks about the specific materials used. This guide was super helpful for making this doll, and I'll link it in the description box. <laughs> She kind of looks like a Medusa or something right now. <laughs> a bit of brushing with a tiny comb and a little extra heat gets the hair a little bit tamer. Here are the gloves. I made this belt with navy blue embroidery thread using a repeated square knot, basically macrame. I used glue to seal off the ends and made a buckle with a bit of jewelry wire I had laying about. Time to deal with that hair. I pull it up into a ponytail, neatening the fibers with a hair straightener, then trim the ponytail and bangs to the shape I want. Oh, 
All right, here's the finished doll. It's time to work on her outfit. This is the look I'm going to be recreating, the blue tank top and olive cargo pants with a nice variety of accessories. As I've said before, my sewing skills are, mm, not great. Mostly I just tape paper towels around my doll, guesstimate where the seams go, and then transfer the result to a piece of muslin to make a test garment. From there I make any alterations, fray check my edited muslin pattern, and then use it to cut out my final pieces. This was, I think, my second attempt at the muslin test. I was trying to figure out where the seams should go to get a good skin-tight fit. I'll be able to conceal them a bit later, so I'm not terribly worried, but at this stage I was unhappy with the fit at the bust. I took in the upper chest a little with some darts that I think turned out okay. I decided to make the shirt entirely out of the light blue fabric, then paint the details in with a darker blue, rather than trying to piece in the dark blue pieces. The poofy pants pattern I used for Lynn and Ilya actually fit Lara with only a few minor modifications. At this stage, I was using the gray fabric from Lynn's bodysuit, thinking I could recolor it to the correct light olive shade with paint. Um, yeah, I was wrong. For the life of me, I couldn't find a fabric in that color, so I wound up finding a beige and making them from that instead. In the meantime, I painted the details onto the shirt with dark blue paint. Basically, I just sketched in guidelines with pencil while the shirt was on the doll, referencing the official artwork to get them lined up correctly, then I painted over them with a tiny brush. I swear, acrylic paint fixes a multitude of artistic sins and failings. Here's the final shirt. I use muted light green paint to recolor the cargo pants 2.0 and then add details like the material used to reinforce the knees and inner thighs. The paint had the unfortunate effect of making the pants really stiff. If I ever find a fabric in a better color or get to experimenting with dyeing fabric, I might remake these in the future. Final details for the pants include a pocket at the upper thigh and some belt loops and matching embroidery thread. Onto the accessories! I used epoxy sculpt to craft her pistol and climbing axes, using one of her hands to give me a rough idea of the scale. They get painted up, washed with a dilute burnt umber or black paint to pick out the details, and then sealed with matte varnish. Off camera, I made a pair of combat boots out of craft foam and hot glue. I figured since Lara's always running around in the jungle and in caves and tombs and things, it's alright if her shoes look kind of beat up. The shoes get painted to match her artwork. With embroidery thread and E6000 glue, because it does dry fairly quickly, I carefully glue on her boot laces. E6000 is definitely a glue you want to use in a well-ventilated area. I use a bit of craft foam, a scrap of fabric, and some skinny ribbons to make her thigh holster. It gets a quick paint job, then I glue it around her leg. Since her outfit is a bit involved, has a lot of accessories, and because the pant cuffs are a little too small to easily go on over her ankles, I'm not going to be doing a typical dress-up montage. Sorry guys. At the last minute, I remember her radio. I make that out of a couple of snippets of craft foam, some hot glue, and a wire for the antenna, and then I paint it before gluing it onto the back of her pants. Finally, I finish assembling her and all of her accessories, then tame her hair once again. I had to put this project aside for a week or so because I was off dog sitting again, and her hair kind of turned into a mess while in storage. That's kind of spot on Lara vibes, actually.
And here she is, Lara Croft. She was a great change of pace from my last two dolls, and I had so much fun with her. I learned a few new skills, and I had so many opportunities to add a lot of details. I think she came out pretty fantastic. Even better, I'm happy to report that Amber loved her. I call that a successful Christmas gift. What's your favorite Tomb Raider game? And do you think I should try my hand at another character from the franchise? Thank you for joining me on this project. Before you head off to go boot up a Tomb Raider game of your own, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. As always, supplies are listed in the description box. You can also find me on Instagram. Join me next time on Silver Griffin Makes a Thing, where we make whatever we feel like at the moment.